It feels like you're in a different world. Like uh, if you if you go from here to Mars, if they're aliens and they're speaking a different language, you don't know what language they're speaking. It's going to be uh, very hard to learn that language, isn't it? So I thought I was in a completely in a different world and I never knew what the teacher said. One word I didn't understand. St Stephen's School in Newham supports their EAL pupils in the classroom using teacher modelling, peer modelling and visual support. But to create a school environment that supports EAL learners, St Stephen's has implemented a visual policy to reflect the cultures of their families in the school's displays. The school has developed an open door policy allowing parents to become part of the school community. They also recruit teaching and support staff who are multilingual. From the head teacher and the senior management team to all the support staff and everybody who works in the school, the same ethos is shared. And that is the ethos that children with EAL can achieve as highly and in some cases better than their monolingual peers throughout the country. The school policy is that the um, school will reflect the community in which we work throughout our school, both in terms of artefacts and fabrics that are around the school, as well as the language that's displayed, to welcome our parents into school and also to welcome the children who are especially new to the country into the school. The first experience was that this is a, um, a good school that can, uh, this school can help me to learn English very fast, very quick. And that's the ex first experience I got from this school. But how do the school's EAL policies work in practice? EAL coordinator, Jo Mathias. We aim to celebrate the different communities from which our children come from. So our entranceway has displays from around the world. We've got the fabrics which are hung up, which also display the community languages and also different displays from the areas. We're also very aware that the entrance should be welcoming for our parents and our pupils and I think the fabrics and the languages displayed here reflect our community. Uh, for example, this one's from the Indian continent and so parents feel that they can identify with artefacts and things relevant to them within school. It is essential that we do uh, work very closely with the community um, and that the community members understand the work that we do because we would encourage and expect parents to support the learning at home, which actually happens at St Stephen's. The school makes sure that wall displays reinforce the learning taking place in the classroom. We've got um, story starters here where the work is modelled for the children and we also have a vocabulary list in the corner here so all the words that the children will need for that week is displayed and up for them every day to refer to. We also encourage the classrooms to have some kind of display reflecting the local community so in this classroom the children have done flags which from their country and they've also found out what welcome is um, in the different languages. Particularly for new children visual support is very important. It's also very important that the work is embedded in a context that the children understand so that the curriculum is very multicultural and the children's previous experiences are taken into account. To help their children learn, St Stephen's recognises the importance of encouraging children to use their home languages. We have lots of banks of dual language books down the corridor. Um, for example, here we have um, French Albanian and Portuguese and the books are written in English and the home language and they're for all the children to take home. They help the children who are French speakers for the parents to read with them at home but also when we have a child who is new to the country, new to the language, they can have a book in their own language and it's also written in English which helps them when they're learning and it gives them the confidence to, that they can do something in school even though they can't speak English and can't read English yet. Every classroom has a home corner stocked with props that are multicultural. The children are encouraged to do plenty of speaking and listening in both English and their home languages. Please. 
Assalamualaikum. Who are you on the phone to, Fatima? My mum. Your mum. Mm. Is she giving you a shopping list? Speaking and listening is embedded in the school curriculum and we do provide lots of opportunities for talk, especially in Key Stage 1 where you've got role play areas such as this. In Key Stage 2 there's lots of drama activities, lots of time for the children to speak and listen to each other. And in the role play areas we try to reflect the cultures of the children and the kinds of things that they do use at home. So for example we've got dolls and uh, juices and rice that they, they're very used to seeing at home. There are different areas of role play in every classroom. So some may be set up as a shop, some may be set up as a hospital or an airport. So we're giving them a variety of experiences. St Stephen's arranges a weekly learning library for parents. It's coordinated by learning mentor Ruby Latif. We call it the learning library. It's for parents to come and borrow educational games, um, CDs, videos um, and bilingual books. And also they can ask what's suitable for their child if they don't really understand um, what's appropriate for their age. Because we do have a lot of our community who don't speak any English so they can come and access that here. One of the very simple and first things that we did was to open the doors of the school and encourage community members to come into school, to sit in classrooms and to understand the learning processes. The Lending Library offers uh, parents the chance to come in and take home uh, learning resources that they will use with their child at home. It's very popular. Uh, many parents do attend and that's very good because it shows us that parents and pupils are um, working together at home and enjoying their learning. It's fun. All right, thank you. And he would know that because he's yeah. talked about that in the classroom as well. Some of the okay, we started the learning library about two years ago. What we're trying to do is include some of the parents in our community. We're trying to get them to help the children at, at home. On Friday. And that's all because my mum uh, doesn't go uh, um, on Friday to work. She doesn't go on Friday. And she stay at home and she read with me. I think one of the main things is, especially because of our children, not all speak in the same language. Not only does it support the, um, the children, but it also supports the parents as well. You know, some of the games um, will help both parents and children not work together, but also learn the language together. Much. It was really interesting to see lots of parents here, both from Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2, and it was good to see the parents asking us questions about the resources they were choosing. For instance, one parent was choosing a, a book for her child in Year 5 who's recently come to the country and wasn't really sure whether the book was suitable, but as the book was based on rhyming patterns and blends, it was absolutely perfect. And it was also lovely to see the children helping out as well and communicating in other languages other than English. So in what languages do you speak in Hindi. How would you explain about one of the books and the tapes in Hindi? Uh, you have a book, you have a tape, you can read it or listen to it. And what, what does that mean? That means like, um, if you can read the book and listen to the book on the tape. As well. Super. Thank you. The support that they get at home in their home language is very important to them and their home language and development in their home language supports their learning of English. I think it's really useful because you get really nice good books and toys and DVDs and you know uh, cassettes and stuff, audio cassettes and stuff. You know it really helps the child uh, develop their learning, during the, especially during the weekends and holidays and stuff. You know. My daughter really looks forward to it so I think it's really good and helpful. <laughs> I think having an open door policy like we have at St Stephen's is a really positive thing because I think to some parents schools are very formidable places that they don't want to come in and visit, you know, see it somewhere where they drop the children off in the morning and pick them up in the evening. But uh, having that kind of 
community that we do have that they can come in, they can speak to teachers whenever they like and there's lots of members of staff who speak other languages so I think it really creates a positive atmosphere. When working with children whose parents come from countries with different education systems, the school makes sure that their expectations are explained early on to avoid any confusion. For example, it might be the school day might be completely different to one they've had um, in another country. Um, what's expected of their child? Um, do they have to come to school every day? And the emphasis here is very good attendance and punctuality. Anyway, this school really prides itself um, on attendance and punctuality. Um, and how the child's going to access that education. Because parents, some parents from abroad, they do feel that their child's going to be labelled as slow um, or they won't be able to learn as fast as the others and um, that's not always true. We have parent evenings at the very beginning of term. They're not standard parent evenings where we speak to the parents individually but invite the whole year group in to speak to their class teacher about the expectations that the teacher will have for that year. The taller one. Room two. Room two, that's sexy because for the children to be comfortable in their learning, the parents have to be comfortable in coming into school and feel that they can come in and talk to a member of staff without school being this sort of um, authority place. One of the most important resources for a school where you have a large number of children with EAL is the, the staff, and the more staff that you have that share the children's home languages, the better. Okay. The school staff reflect the community to a certain degree. If a member of staff speaks a language such as um, Punjabi, and we have a Punjabi-speaking child who does not yet um, speak English, that um, those, you know, the elder will support the child. So learning still takes place, be it in a, in a language other than English. We have in the past used children within the school as well to yeah. help where families come in where there is um, very little English. We've actually used children within the school to translate yeah. um, simple messages like um, about homework and PE. Yeah. My mum came from Sile and my dad came from Tangai, somewhere around um, the capital city of Bangladesh. And I'm like the mix of both of them and my sister is. So uh, me and my sister, we can speak both languages. When I was growing up, um, I didn't use my home language at all. In fact, my parents used to use Punjabi at home, but uh, we could understand it fully, but we were never really encouraged to speak it. I've had to almost relearn Punjabi in my role here at, um, in school so that I can support the pupils and the parents. It's a really important message to our community mm. that you have very successful members of staff, senior managers, who also, you know, a young Asian lady who will speak Punjabi. It's a really important message going out to the community. I'm bilingual myself and what's been interesting and very helpful I think for me is that I have been able to identify with some of the needs that I see in this community. Using everybody's skills that's linked to this school because and everybody is very happy to do that because we're all actually mm. our aim is the same to enable every child here mm. to do the best that they can and it's using everything possible that the community can offer. Mm, definitely. And it, and it works.